Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Monday in the third week of Easter. Happy, easy time. Thanks be to God. Hey, so Ken was up watching the sky last night and has this great picture of some really beautiful things. And as soon as Anthony allows me to share my screen, I will show you. In the meantime, let's, oh, it's, it's already ready. Okay, yes. Here, look at this. Very pretty. Looking at some Northern Lights action happening at Sundance. That's just great. Thanks again for sharing. All right, as we always do, let's begin with our prayer. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia. Qui aque meru isti portare, Alleluia. Resurrexit, sicut dixit, Alleluia. Ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary, Alleluia, for the Lord has truly risen, Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good times. Just a reminder, no coffee tomorrow. I'm taking a little vacation, but we will be back on Wednesday, but then not on Saturday because it's confirmation day and we have a lot of other things going on that morning, but then back on Sunday. Okay, great. Today, we're also back to having some saints to talk about. This is the first time on coffee that we've had this opportunity for a while. So that's fun too. And this is a fun saint, an interesting one. As we do, let's dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called Synagogue of Freedmen, Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and people from Cilicia and Asia came forward and debated with Stephen, but they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, we have heard him speaking blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him, seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, this man never stopped saying things against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All those who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen. I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. One does not live on bread alone 
but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had not gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they had eaten the bread when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered and said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Last week, we were talking about John chapter 3, and now we've gone to John chapter 6. This is kind of like the greatest hits in John right now. So John chapter 3, remember, that was the talking with Nicodemus in the garden. The spirit goes where he wills. You know, all, all those things. Very, very fun and interesting. You have to be born again. Then John chapter 6 is famously... I am the bread of life, and which we'll hear on Wednesday. Uh, between this gospel and Wednesday, there's a very short little bit. Here's what would be tomorrow, except not only are we not here for coffee, tomorrow's also the feast day of St. Mark. And so it's a whole different reading anyway. But the little interesting little bit before Jesus says, I am the bread of life, is this. Continuing the gospel I just read. <clears throat> what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst, and so on. And we'll talk more about that on Wednesday. But the setup for it is, first, there's a feeding of the multitude, you know, a, a Jesus miracle that is well known, and then there's some walking on the water just for fun. But the feeding of the multitude is also the setup for what Jesus is telling them. It's not that you saw signs, but that you were fed. And that's an interesting distinction, because the one of them is kind of entertaining. One of them is sustaining. The difference between signs and the miracle of the loaves and fish. That's the more interesting miracle. And so he uses this as the way to start talking about the other things. It's interesting that they bring up Moses and manna in the desert. It seems like Jesus is doing the same thing that we hear Stephen doing which is to say to blaspheme Moses, which is obviously, a, 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 that's, that's, that's not that, no. <laughs> they're just trying, they're just trying to, to get him. That, that's all, that, that's the whole thing going on with Stephen. So it's, incidentally with Stephen, we're in that part of the story of the Acts of the Apostles. Tomorrow, that reading, which again, we're not gonna read because no coffee tomorrow, but also it's St. Mark's day, so we're not gonna read it anyway, but is that part of the Acts of the Apostles that actually comes to his death? Which is, again, interesting because they're just going to stone him. Um, it, it seems a, a little bit funny if we're thinking about the death and resurrection of Jesus, because they went through this whole thing about we do not have the authority to execute anyone, and it can't be us, it has to be you with the, with the Romans and all of that going on. Well, 
it, it seems a little bit incongruous because now the the synagogue is getting up to the weird things again. But it's different. Why is it different? Well, it's somewhat different circumstances, but from a theological situation, it's also very, very different because Stephen in his martyrdom dies for the preaching. Jesus in his death dies for the sake of the people. So there's that whole detail in there that it is better that one man should die than the destruction of the people, that handing over that kind of payment as if it were a ransom. All of that's very, very, very powerful in terms of what the idea of redemption is. Just a little reminder there, I'm not gonna go into it right now because we've already talked about that, but just putting it as slightly different. It's a different situation theologically. All right, anyway, but altogether always with Jesus anyway. Today, I want to talk a little bit about St. Fidelis of Sigmaringen, who you're probably thinking, who is that? Okay, so it's the feast day today. St. Fidelis was a Capuchin, so he was a Franciscan in those days. He was born in 1577 and died in 1622, specifically April 24th. Today is the day. And the work that he did was, first, he was a lawyer, but realizing this is probably a bad thing for him, then he became a Capuchin, then he became a Franciscan. There are different kinds of Franciscans. Uh, the Capuchin are notable because they have a giant hood on their habit, so they're called Capuchins. It's a capuche, which is also like, yes, cappuccino. Yeah, them, those, those people. Anyway, um, the thing about St. Fidelis was that he was a missionary to Christians. So he was a missionary from Germany. We, we think of Swabia as being in Germany, kind, kind, but it's different times in different eras of the world. That's not necessarily where it is. But anyway, so he's from one of those places and is sent to what we think of as Switzerland to preach the gospel to the newly Protestantized, specifically Calvinists. And he preached the gospel very well. He brought many people back to the faith. He uh, preached the rosary. He was very, very good to the poor and, and is known for his work of charity with the poor. And um, coming to his martyrdom is kind of a funny one. It's a funny one for me. So he was invited to a meeting of some people on a Sunday at church. They wanted to talk to him. Instead, they actually didn't want to talk to him. Actually, they just wanted to murder him. <laughs> and so he died. So it's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's one of those difficult kind of moments. It's a thing. Not everyone uh, particularly likes their clergy uh, and bad things happen sometimes. <laughs> now, obviously with St. Fidelis, that was kind of a bit more so than usual. And it's, it's also a bit of a trope that, like for example, when the priests get together, one of the things that we sometimes joke about is who is angry with you today? Of kind of like, what are the petty things that, that people are trying to make your life less happy about today? Or sometimes not so petty. But the point is that I'm trying to make with this is that in a way, St. Fidelis is the patron saint of these kinds of divisions and problems that arise. In a very real way, whenever we allow ourselves to become so angry or to allow ourselves into that point of being at, at such odds, like for example, with the clergy or the clergy with the people, then we've allowed into our hearts a, a spirit of violence, a spirit of, uh, well, you know, not unity of division that is very contrary to the Easter unity that we are celebrating right now. In 1622, the year that St. Fidelis was martyred, it was several weeks after Easter. It was a Sunday. It was like, we would think of it as like the fifth, yeah, fifth Sunday of Easter. Uh, Ascension was like the next week. Yeah, it was like the fifth Sunday of Easter. As, as we would count the Sundays. 
And anyway, it was, it was kind of bad. He was a martyr. So in this case, uh, in the hatred of the faith, that's kind of the technical kind of term for it. And it was for the faith that he was martyred, admittedly by other Christians, which does happen sometimes, and it's not great. But it was, I think, even more than just hatred of the faith, it was just hatred. And that's the kind of takeaway. Now, I'm very happy. I live a very happy life and people are good to me. Thank you for being so nice to me. <laughs> we, we have a good thing going together and I'm very, very grateful about that. But it's also just a little bit of a reminder that we must always keep that spirit of unity with us. So also he was part of something called the congregation, we at least then called for the propagation of the faith in, in Latin, the propaganda fidei. And he was, one of the very first martyrs of that group, which still exists. It's a Vatican organization that exists for bringing the gospel to places that are not easy to preach to. I have a friend, someone I went to school with once upon a time who works for them. Actually, he's a hacker who in his particular world of what he does is actually countries that are not nice to, <laughs> to Christianity to try to get the message in. The, 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 the real world spirit of the mission has changed a lot because the way of communicating has changed a lot, but it's still a very important thing, not small. And so on this particular feast day of St. Fidelis, several things to think about, but I think the biggest important takeaway is to always maintain that spirit of unity and of peace, because the bad road that leads elsewhere is particularly injurious, not just in violence, but also anger and sadness and, well, kind of being distracted from what's really about this, especially in this Easter time. And so St. Fidelis is a very, I think, a very worthwhile martyr to celebrate in Easter. All right, as we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that they may be bridges leading to the Lord's divine grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people experiencing homelessness, that they will discover the unconditional love found in Christ Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For policymakers, that they may soften their hearts toward people who are helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Utahns, that during our transition to spring, we give thanks to God for all his creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for what else shall we pray? From Bill. For all Christians to come to the fullness of the faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are pleased to award the palm of martyrdom to St. Fidelis, as burning with love for you, he propagated the faith. Grant, we pray, through his intercession, that grounded in charity, we may merit to know with him the power of the resurrection of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Good times. Let's keep praying. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. 
O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of Saint Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Great, everyone have a lovely Monday. And we'll see you again here on Wednesday. All right, God bless. Goodbye.